This is a biography of Una O'Neill Chaplin, written by Jane Scowell. And Una was the daughter of Eugene O'Neill, the playwright, wrote uh, Long Day's Journey into Night, um, Iceman Cometh, Nobel Prize winning playwright. And uh, she married Charlie Chaplin, who was the ultimate icon of 20, 20th century films, uh, starting with silent film and then um, great films like Modern Times and um, The Great Dictator. This, I, I just kind of picked up, it was one of those books that I picked up based on the cover. It's such a really nice cover. Like, I love the colors. And uh, she, you know, she looks nice. She's a cute lady. There she is with, um, what kind of like by the, by the hair looks like Picasso, but um, it's supposed to be Chaplin. <coughs> this was, uh, it was a nice, nice book, you know, good pictures. Uh, nicely written, nothing, you, you know, like nothing too inspired. I feel like the author did a decent job of going a little bit in depth. Uh, she read all her correspondence and, um, you know, did a, a good job of uh, profiling her father and her relationship with her father. And um, I believe one of her uh, brothers like committed suicide. And there was like a lot of suicide going on, especially on that side of the family. And um, to kind of cover the part about her father, she, she was estranged from her father for a long time. Her mom was also an editor and writer, apparently a very good one. And um, they uh, lived off allowances from him uh, and they lived in the Upper East Side of New York, which to this day is still um, ranked as the highest income level uh, residence in the U.S. She went to like a private school and she was quite a socialite in her teens. Um, I think this is, this is <laughs> her. She was kind of like the Paris Hilton of her day. Uh, before she got married and she was um, what's that called like uh, I guess a socialite but a debutante you know and this is uh, her her with her father so Eugene O'Neill was apparently like a jerk according to this biography it's really uh, funny because I'm not a big fan of authors that and people that refer to to others as genius they like it, it but genius is okay because some people are genius but then but using the term genius to excuse their behavior so apparently this guy was like a real piece of work you know and uh he was neglectful he was self-obsessed -ob you know and uh, he met, eventually went with some other lady who was just as kind of egoistic as him and like pandered uh, to his ego and uh, he seemed like a total jerk but then in some parts of the book like the author's like you know that's kind of goes with genius you know like being an absolute like evil person okay <laughs> if you say so so I didn't like those parts and that really stuck with uh, with me uh, I, excusing uh, you know, excusing certain behavior. And, you know, I saw Iceman Cometh live with Denzel Washington in a titular role here in New York. And yeah, it's, I see, I get it, you know. Um, I tried to read uh, Long Day's Journey into Night when I was in college. I couldn't get through it. It seemed like so freaking boring. I was like, get to the effing point. Um, I may watch it at some point. I mean, I'd like to see a good version on stage because that's how it's meant to be. But yeah, you know, when you read his plays, 
they're so much more subtle. And then when I saw it played out, especially the ending of, you know, Iceman Cometh, when I saw the ending, it kind of like made me realize that like how influential he actually was. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it, but um, when I saw the ending, it just made sense that, uh, you know, why he's, uh, you know, such a, like how influential he was because uh, it, you know, especially the ending and, and like the, the, the type of drama, uh, which was, I guess, in the Depression era for that novel, um, repeated itself by lesser uh, qualified playwrights throughout uh, the 20th century. So um, anyway, so she's like just this, a sweet girl, you know, um, and uh, accor according to the novel, at uh, one point she was quoted as saying like, oh, I just want to like find a rich guy and get married. Uh, that was her ambition in her teens. But it seems like that's something you just kind of say, you know, because I know when I was a teen, I sent all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but it turned out with her, that's actually what she did. She seemed like she, f she found this guy. She was 18 at the time, and he was 57. Quite a disparaging age difference. And they had quite a life together. I actually, they lived happily uh, together for the rest of their lives. There was a cute little video that you can find online of like them walking together and she's basically holding him up when he's like old and feeble um you know uh, walking uh in their in their uh, you know property uh, up in uh the, the swiss alps so um you know they had a, and they had eight children and he had his last child like with her i think when he was in her 70s and i remember when i was a kid uh, my, my father used to, it was one of the things he knew that uh, Chaplin had children in, in his 70s and 80s, you know. It's kind of like, uh, you know, nice history. An interesting thing was that J.D. Salinger courted her before she went to California and met Chaplin. So she dated J.D. Salinger and apparently like this devastated him that he sent like some scathing kind of reply um, like years later. Because imagine this, you know, you're J.D. Salinger and you're kind of a, a weirdo to begin with. Um, <laughs> because I don't really think, based on the documentaries that I've seen on J.D. Salinger, he was a piece of work himself and he was highly traumatized by the war which, you know, understandably, I'm very sympathetic to that. But anyway, so they date, dated, and um, and then she, you know, she dumped him for, like, a 57-year-old. So that apparently devastated him, <laughs> which I find uh, humorous. I mean, I hated it if it happened to me. And also, he had nothing going for him. He hadn't, like, published a novel at that time, you know, so... Uh, he just went on like one or two dates when she was a young um, socialite in New York. Yeah, so her and Chaplin had a long life together. And they were very, very happy. Um, they had eight children. And uh, she died about like 10 years after him. Uh, apparently, she tried to date, so she died fairly young, like in her 50s. Uh, apparently, she tried to date some dude, but like, I mean, I don't think she married Chaplin for the sex, you know? Like, I feel like it, she turned into like a housewife, and she she enjoyed that, and, uh, and a mother. So, um, for me, uh, reading this book, it was just... I wanted to get an insight into this, like, woman that seemed to be, like, just a mom. Um, and uh, she found a guy that was highly intelligent and creative, and she loved him, and he adored her. And uh, she devoted herself to, you know, the family. And sure enough, he 
was in a position to really provide for her, which helped. So to some extent, it clarified some things. Like some women, I think like, you know, they, they can start out young with, with somebody that's both passionate and uh, history shows that usually the man outgrows them at some point uh, with his fame and, and he dumps them for a younger woman. But um, maybe she was wise enough that um, she saw that, she foresaw that, and she found an old guy that would dote on her and also was in a position to, to provide for her. And, you know, she didn't have to worry about how many children they had, and I'm sure they had some worries here and there. But, um, um, you know, she was happy. So anyway, it was an interesting book. I recommend it. I think it's like a really easy, fun, breezy read. It's nice paper if you get this edition. I love this book. It just feels good in your hands. And I feel like that's part of what helps me get through a book. So um, let's see what else. I mean, is she goes, you know, she's along the, the ride through some of Chaplin's later works, uh, including Limelight, which is mentioned here. And, um, and then I think he, he, he fights for uh, royalties. So he's living off of, you know, his movies being replayed. And yeah, so it's a, it's a, good, it's a good little book. And it's an insight to this um, uh, interesting woman. I mean, I, I pretty much did spoil it because there's, you know, I think in a nutshell, most people know as much about her, you know. They know that she dated Salinger. They know uh, she, she dumped him for this old dude named Charlie Chaplin. And they know that she's the daughter of Eugene O'Neill. So, uh, you know, that's, I guess, to, you know, I guess I didn't get much more than that out of the book like because that's all her highlights it's like she wasn't really productive creatively so you know she was a mom um i think there was some mention of you know each of her children but i think in reality if people were only that interested in this kind of thing in reality um the readers are not interested in, in uh, you know, hearing about how she helped raise each one of those kids and like, you know, and actually this is, this is written after she had passed, so that information is not really readily available. And it's funny because in like in letters and things, yeah, that information is probably shared like, oh, you know, uh, I got a new jacket for this kid that outgrew it or whatever, you know, she would maybe share it to some friends. So it's funny how like in society, what really sells a book is like the associations with like cr other creative uh, people. So it's like a book is within the media of entertainment and O'Neill was a playwright, you know, not in like nonfiction and, and Chaplin was in film, you know, screenwriting and film. So, this is all like, you know, kind of the media of books feeds off these other two media. So it's uh, it's a book by association. And Jane Scow Scowville, uh, basically, she, like I said, she does a nice job. And uh, I don't know if she pitched it or if somebody commissioned her, but, you know, it's a good gig. You know, write about this nice woman and uh, do a little research. Well-written book. It's fun. If you want more gritty detail, like, about, you know, like, how they met and all that stuff, it's a cute book. And I, it's actually a book that might make an interesting gift, a nice gift. So, anyway, I enjoyed it, actually. I enjoyed it because it was something different and I generally went in to it wanting to learn about this nice woman you know and hear her side of the story 
So it was, it was nice that this book was written to showcase her individuality.